What's new at Charlie's? What's new at Charlie's? Still on Main. What's new at Charlie's? Tell me what's new at Charlie's? Still on Main. Hi, welcome back to another edition of What's New at Charlie's. Well, Don, we're back at Bardstown again this week. Seems like uh, seems like we spent a lot of time at Bardstown uh, distilling. You know, the interesting thing is all these different videos for Bardstown we've done, I finally remembered to wear the shirt. Yeah, my, I, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I actually looked and it wasn't, I think it was dirty. So, yeah, because I wear it all the time. It's one of my favorite shirts. But anyway, we're doing uh, Chateau de la Bade, uh, which is a... Uh, an Armagnac cast, right? Yep, finished in Armagnac cast. So this is part of their collaborative series where they, you know, we've done, I can't remember the all of them we've done. We've done, we just did the Plantation Rum. We did the KBS. Yep. Um, so anyway, this is, so this is actually, um, they're revisiting this. This was one of the first ones they ever did, if I remember right. And, and it was so popular that they decided to do it again. Um, which isn't their normal thing. They're usually they're one and done. So what do you know about this one, Don? Well, you know, it's a blend. And uh, what I like about what Bardstown does is the finishing in the Armagnac cask is a long finishing. You know, it goes for 18 months. Yeah. And it draws in all those flavors. And, you know, we've seen that in some of the other collaboratives that we've done. It's 107 proof. And... Uh, you know, it's amazing. When you think of Bardstown Bourbon Company, they haven't been around that long and they now are operating 60 different mash bills. That's crazy, man. Buffalo Trace makes how many? Uh, maybe six. <laughs> um, and, and, and just to put it in perspective, we're here to talk about this one, but yeah. uh, just to rehash what Bardstown Bourbon Company does is when you drink Calumet, when you drink Bird Dog, when you drink High West, James E. Pepper, Jefferson's, Bell Mead, those products are all contract distilled at Bardstown. Wow, dude, yeah. Well, I mean, we've been there, I've been there now, you've been there multiple times, but seeing it as state of the art as it is, it doesn't surprise me. They uh, definitely have it uh, down to a science, no pun intended. It's very scientific as uh yeah. It is. Where it some is. of the other ones you go to are a little more by the seat of your pants, maybe, where this one is everything is computerized. and Yeah, so it's kind of wild to see the difference. And I absolutely love their glass front Rick House. Oh, right? yeah, that was Which cool. Really yeah, beautiful. Had, had plants in it. And like, yeah. I, all I think was missing was classical music and a glass of wine. So, Most yeah. importantly, though, we got to sample there, so that was a we good thing. We did, have, and it was a great, great trip. So, anyway, uh, so this is the Chateau de la Bade. So, um, what was that? A ten-year-old Tennessee bourbon, aged twenty-four months at the bottom, and then uh, a twelve-year-old um, Kentucky, I believe, aged. aged for sixteen months on the top shelf. And then they blend them together and come out one hundred seven. So, um, I mean, that's what they do really good is uh, is blending this stuff and and getting finding the sweet spot. But they haven't let us down yet, have they? No, they really haven't. Well, let's see how they did this time. Any other uh, fun facts there from Bardstown, or? You know, uh, I, I'm anxious to see, you know, what the future holds. We already talked about how they bought Green River. Yeah. Uh, which just means they're going to, you know, keep Ooh. on moving forward. Man, just the smell alone on this thing. So you open the bottle. It's got an aroma to it, man. It does. Wow. It does. It smells great. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Mmm. Drinking, I'm just making an air freshener. Wow, it's amazing! Nope, I'm gonna drink it. Dried fruit. Some. Uh, I I read that some people got apricot. I'm getting a little apricot. Yeah. Out of it. But definitely dried fruit for sure. And I'm also getting something that is very interesting. I, I'm getting a tobacco note. 
almost cinnamon or spicy or something yeah, like that. There's cinnamon in there. Yeah, that. cinnamon, yeah. That, that is really interesting. And again, the wine finishing, or the uh, brandy finishing, is uh, really kind of Not overpowering. It, nope. it it blends really well, and the whiskey comes through. Um, just it, yeah, it just gives it another level of flavor. You just one more layer in there as you as you drink. Yeah, man, the aroma is fantastic. So I can't remember. I can't recall, but I don't believe the last one we did was 107. I don't think it was that high. Yeah, I, I, I think it was in the remember. 90s. I don't don't remember. Um, if we did any research before this, we would remember that. It's hard to keep up. It is hard it's, to keep it's up. It's really hard to keep up. It's hard to keep up just with Barstown Bourbon Company. Yeah, no kidding. By man. themselves. Much less all the other things we do. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Um, yeah. But this one is really good. Um, yeah, it's great. Wow, this one. is fantastic. This one is right up there with some of their best yeah. releases. Well, that's the really reason is. they redid it, because it was one of the most, um, from what I read about, it was one of the most popular, one of the most storied, one of the best ones they ever came out with. So that's why they thought that they would re reinvent it and try it again. So um, now I wish I would have tasted the first one. I never saw the first one before. Um, but it'd be nice to put the two side by side. Right. If anyone's got a bottle, would like to bring it in and we'll put them side by side, we could probably work something out. This one's so, a winner. That is definitely a winner. So, I don't know if there'll be anything, but I think the next one we'll be doing from these guys is their original stuff that's coming out, which we got the sample when we were down there, right? That's right. So, you want to go on that? What they coming out with their first? It's their first own bourbon, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So they, you know, been waiting. They're not rushing it to the market. Uh, we sampled it. When we sampled it, they thought it still needed a little bit more time. Yeah. Uh, but it was pretty remarkable when we tasted it. It was very good, yeah. So most of the stuff they've done up till now has all been a little bit of their juice maybe or other juice, but they always put it right on the side. No, like, you know, no, not trying to hide anything. Very transparent. Um, so it'll be interesting though. Um, I'm assuming the next time we do this will be for that one. We'll be uh, we'll be reviewing their very, their very own bourbon. So I'm excited for that. So. Well, I'm not sure about that because I just found out they did a uh, collaboration with the West Virginia Barrel. Company. What? Yeah. Oh, well, wait, well. So the next one we're going to be doing is going to be the West Virginia Barrel collaboration. Uh, so I, yeah. I'm very interested in that, and uh, I think you're pretty interested in anything from West Virginia. Absolutely. You know I am. So, so yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to have to go. We got to go there sometime, man. Yeah. We do. We got to go sometime. So we got to go check that yeah. out. So. When we're done, I'm going to talk Field to you trip. about that. Field, Field trip. trip. Field trip. Let's go. Another live remote. I see it coming. Cheers, Cheers. buddy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. What's new in Charlie's still on Main? What's new in Charlie's? Tell me what's new in Charlie's still on Main?